Hello everyone. The title of this video is Factoring the Sum and or Difference of Cubes. Every example I'm going to be doing in this video is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org and I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text in section 1.5 titled Factoring Polynomials. And I'm working under the objective heading Factoring the Sum and Difference of Cubes. Each example I'm going to do is taken directly from the ex either the examples in this text or the try it problems in this text or some of the even numbered exercises at the end of this section in the text. I will also have time stamps for each example I do when, you know, when they begin in the video in the description of the video below if you'd like to use those to jump around the video. I also request that whenever I start a new question pause the video and try to work it out yourself first before watching me doing it and comparing. Because um, if you're just watching me do these things and not practicing yourself, chances are you're not going to learn all that much. Alright, so I've got all my examples written out on paper. We're asked to factor right, the sum and difference of cubes, factor completely. And I'll point this out as I've been trying to point out every every time you're asked to factor an expression, the first thing you should look for is the greatest common factor of all the terms. Right. Now, if, uh, for the most part, in this particular video, the examples we're going to be seeing, the terms have a greatest common factor of 1, so I don't have to worry about pulling out the GCF, but that is the first thing you should look out for when asked to factor anything, is you know, pull out the GCF if possible. Okay, so the first thing we're given here, now notice there are two terms. It's a sum, and I've got some powers that are, you know, multiples of 3, I've got some cubes. So chances are, you know, if it's two terms, a sum, right, plus, and there are some powers that are multiples of three in each term, the chances are it's one of these sums of cubes, right, a sum of two cubes. That's an E, sorry. <laughs> All right, the sum of cubes. Alright, so I'll write out a little, it's kind of like the difference of squares or a perfect square trinomial. There's a little formula that I'm going to write here to help us in, that you should, I would recommend you memorize it to help you in, in speeding up the factoring of these sums of cubes. And then we'll see on the next page a difference of cubes. So a, a sum of cubes takes the following form, right? you got some expression, which I'll call A to the third power, a perfect cube, plus, and then another expression, b, also to the third power. Right? So a cube plus a cube, right? the sum of cubes. Well, if you recognize an expression as a sum of cubes, then you should be able to easily factor it. Right? But again, you should have this memorized, please. So it's going to break down the two factors. At the first factor, just get rid of the cubes. It's a plus b. All right, so the first factor, a plus b, just, just get rid of the cubes. Times, all right, then the other factor is the tricky one. All right. Now on the other factor, I like to do this. Remember, you got to multiply these to check. You know, these two ter these two factors I write need to multiply to be equal to a cubed plus b cubed. So a times what would give me a cubed? 
well, a times a squared. Right, that would give me a cubed. So the first term in this second factor is whatever a is squared. And then the power of a, there are going to be three terms. Right, this is a lot to remember, I know, but you know, get, get, get used to it. There are going to be three terms in this second factor. First term has a squared. The second term will have just a to the first. Right, so I'll write a, leave a little space, write a. And then the last term will have no a at all. So the power of a decreases. And the power of b will increase. So the first term will have no b. The second term will have b to the first, so you have a times b. And then the last term has b to the second, right? That'll give me the b cubed when I multiply b by b squared. That'll give me the b cubed. All right, now what goes in between them, right? What signs? Now in this text, uh, they bring up a little acronym that you can use to help you remember what signs go where. And that is SOAP. Soap. You know, wash your hands with soap. Um, so in the first factor, see how there's a plus sign there, plus sign there? So it's the same it's the same sign as you started with, right? It was a sum of cubes. In this first factor, I have a sum, a plus sign. All right, then after writing these three terms out, right, again, starting with a squared, decreasing the power of a, and then increasing the power of b, right, getting all these terms, a squared, a, b, and b squared in here. The sign that goes in between the a squared and the a, b is the opposite opposite the opposite of this this sign here so same sign opposite sign so if there's a plus you know, if you're doing the sum of cubes this is a minus All right, so we have a squared minus a b and then the sign that goes between a b and b squared this is always plus a p Right, always plus or always positive. Right. So it doesn't matter if you have a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes, this sign that goes between the AB and the B squared will always be plus. Right. Okay. So get to learning this, right? get to memorizing this. Sorry, I cut through the word opposite there, I apologize. But yeah, so a cubed plus b cubed factors to a plus b. Again, just get rid of the cubes, keep the same sign, times, and then start with a squared, then you have a to the first, no a, and then no b, b to the first, b squared, right? The power of a decreases as you move from left to right. The power on b increases as you move from left to right. And then the sign between a squared and a b is opposite. Right? So if you had a sum of cubes, it's going to be a minus. And then the sign between a, b, and b squared is a, p, always plus. Right? And you can check by multiplying these, you know, distribute the a, distribute the b, and combine like terms. You'll see that this ends up equaling a cubed plus b cubed. All right, I promise you. But I leave it to you to check that. Right? Okay, so this first example. So I have 216a cubed plus b cubed. This first term, 216 is actually a nice perfect cube. 216 is 6 cubed, right? 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So 216a cubed is 6 times a to the third power, right? If you were to take 6a times 6a times 6a, you would get 216a to the third. All right, then we have plus, and then the next one is just b cubed, you know, b to the third power. Right, it's already there. Right, it's already a perfect cube. All right, so now right, I'm going to think of this 6a, right, the expression being cubed in the first term as capital A. 
plus, and then this you know lowercase b here as capital B, right? The, the the expression being cubed in the second term, and then just replace you know go through the little formula here, replace every capital A with six A, and replace every capital B with lowercase b. So this will factor. Again, the first factor is a plus b. Just get rid of the cubes. Right? So 6a plus you know, little b. Okay. Times, and then the next factor has three terms. The first term is a squared. Right? So I'll put this in parentheses, right? 6a to the second power. The next term will have just 6a to the first power. And then the final term has nothing, right? No a. And then the power of b, right? The little b here. There's no little b in the first one. Then there's little b to the first in the second term. And then little b, you know, squared. Sorry about that. That's a square. Little b squared in the third term. Right. And then comes the soap, right? We have the same sign here between these two terms, the plus already, right? Opposite sign here, right? If we have a sum of cubes, this is a minus. And then between the last two terms in this second factor, always plus. Right? And then we simplify, of course. So this is 6a plus b times, and then 6a squared, 6a times 6a, that's 36 times a to the second minus, right, the opposite sign. And then 6a times b is just 6ab, right, 6ab. And then the always plus, right, the ap. And then b squared. And there we go, right. Now I know that you might be thinking, hey, this polynomial is a quadratic, right? You got squares. And we've we've been able to factor quadratics. So I'm going to tell you right now that this quadratic you know, as long as you pull the GCF out first and then factor the sum of cubes, this quadratic will be prime over the integers. Okay, I know it's quadratic, but I I promise you right now this second factor with the squares in it won't be factored any further. Right. So just save yourself some time and thinking there. So here we go. This is it. The factorization of 216a cubed plus b cubed. But don't forget to check your work. Right. So remember how you check factoring. You multiply. Right? So I'm going to write that again. We take 6a plus b times and then 36a squared minus 6ab plus b squared. And we multiply. Now remember how to multiply polynomials. Right? You can only do two factors at a time, which I have here, two factors. And you take each term from one and distribute to the other. So I'll take the 6a and distribute it to this three terms over here. Right, so we get you know 6a times 36a squared would be 216a cubed and 6a times negative 6ab would be negative 36a squared b and then 6a times b squared would be positive 6 a b squared, right? So those are the three terms I get after distributing 6a. And then I move to the b and distribute the b, right? And we have b times 36a, that's positive 36a squared b. b times negative 6ab, that'd be negative 6ab squared. And then b times b squared is positive, you know, b cubed. And look at what happens, right? The a squared b terms cancel, negative 36 plus 36, right? They make 0. And the a b squared terms cancel, right? 6 plus negative 6 is also 0. So all I'm left with is this first term and this last term, 
which was the original expression, 216a cubed plus b cubed, right? That sum of cubes. This is the original expression. So great, our factorization is correct, right? You multiply and see, you know, is what I factored it to actually equal to the original expression? Another thing you might want to try, right, just to test some things out, uh, this is actually how you prove that you did it correctly, you actually multiply it out by hand. But if you want some, you know, like a calculator to assist you, to help you believe that these expressions are actually equal, well, two expressions are only equal if they take on the same value no matter what you plug in for the variables. Right, so if I were to plug in 0 for a and 0 for b, the original expression and this final expression would both have a value of 0. If I were to plug in 1 for a and 1 for b, in b both expressions would take on the value of 217. All right. Let me just show you that. All right. Let me show you that with the, with the, with the assistance of a calculator. All right. So I'm going to this free online graphing calculator website called you know, desmos.com and in the first box on the side here I'm going to enter our expression 216 a cubed plus b cubed right and add sliders for these variables now the sliders just help you change the value of each variable right so you see when a is 1 and b is 1 the value of this expression is 217 see but then I change the value of a change the value of B, now it's, you know, 5,264.649, whatever, right? All right, and then below this, I'll put our factored expression, right? This was 6A plus B times 36A squared minus 6AB plus B squared. And look, you see how when a is 2.9 and b is negative 1.5, they have the exact same value. And when a is 5.8 and b is 3.6, the exact same value, right? And you can change these scales for a and b sliders to whatever you want, but just know that I'm starting to believe now that these expressions are actually equal, right? It feels to me like they're equal. Now, I already showed that they were equal by multiplying, right? That's the way to truly show it. But you get a rough idea as to, man, these must be equal, because no matter what I plug in for A and B, they have the same value. All right. okay. And that should happen for any equivalent expressions, right? Ex expressions are only equivalent when they take on the same value, no matter what you plug in for the variables. Great. All right, so again, you got the sum of cubes formula here. Next page. we're going to see a difference of cubes, which has basically the same formula, just with some little sign changes. So here I have two numbers, you know, two terms. This time it's a difference, right? You subtraction. And there's a cube, right? There's a third powers, multiple powers that are multiples of three. So if that's the case, you got two terms, there's a difference, and the powers are multiples of three, there's a good chance that it is a difference of cubes. All right, so it's very similar, right? It takes on this form, and anything of this form is a difference of cubes. Some expression a cubed minus, right, minus this time is a difference, and then some other expression b also cubed Right. Well, if you recognize that your polynomial has this form, then you should be able to factor it. Right. And again, it's going to be two factors. The first, just like with sum of cubes, just get rid of the cubes. Just get rid of the cubes. A minus B. A minus B. Right. And you see how this sign, right, the minus here, that's the, the same, right? The S in the SOAP acronym, right? 
same sign as the original. So the first factor is a minus b, and then the second factor, again, will have three terms, starting with a squared, then the next term will have just a to the first, third term will have no a, and the, the b will increase in power. So no b, then b to the first in the second term, so you have a times b, and then b squared in the third term. And then comes the rest of the signs, right? These two here. Again, this the SOAP acronym, right? SOAP. Same sign here in this first factor. And then between these two terms is the opposite sign. So if this is a difference of cubes, this will be a plus. Right? And then the AP between these two terms, always plus, always plus. All right, so there it is, the difference of cubes factoring formula. a cubed minus b cubed will factor to a minus b, right, just get rid of the cubes, keep the same sign, times the quantity a squared plus, right, the opposite sign, a b plus, right, always plus b squared. The power of a is decreasing in each of these three terms, and the power of B is increasing. Right. So, yeah, so it's very, very similar <laughs> to the sum of cubes formula. The only difference are these two signs here. This was a plus and this was a minus back in the sum of cubes formula. And now it's a minus and a plus in this difference of cubes formula. Okay, so here we go. A thousand is 10 cubed, right? So a thousand X cubed is 10 X to the third power, right? There it is as a, as a cube. So 10x is going to be the a from the formula, right? a cubed, 10x cubed, minus, and then 1, you know, is 1 cubed, right? 1 to any power is 1. Well, I should say 1 to any finite power is 1. But anyway, and then I'll think of 1 as the B. Right? And then just kind of again, hopefully, I'm hoping you memorize these. Go through and replace all the A's with 10x and all the B's with 1. Right? So this factor is to, you know, first factor is just get rid of the cubes, A minus B, 10x minus 1 times and then you have a squared, so and put this in parentheses, 10x, that's a squared. The next term will have just a to the first, right, just 10x. And then the last term will have no a, so no 10x. And then the power of b increases, so there's, I mean, technically there's a 1 here, but no b, and then, you know, times 1 to the first here, and then there's 1 squared at the end, right, just replacing all the b's with 1. And then you have, you know, same sign here, opposite sign, so a plus here if it's a difference of cubes, and then always plus between these last two. And then we simplify, right, so this is first factor, 10x minus 1 times, and then, you know, 10x squared is 100 times x to the second, plus 10x times 1, right, so plus 10x, and then plus 1 squared, or just plus 1. And there you go. And again, this quadratic, you know, if there's no GCF in the beginning, that you, if you didn't pull out any GCF, this quadratic will be prime. You don't have to factor that any further. It'll be prime over the integers. And there you go. And I, I did it with the first problem, and I'll, I'll leave the rest to you. But I'm just going to say, don't forget to check your work. All right? Multiply these two. You know, distribute the 10x, distribute the negative 1, combine like terms. You should end up with 1,000x cubed minus 1. Right? Also, you know, you could use a calculator to help you with this, or just pick different values of x and do it, do it by hand, pardon me. You know, if these are truly equal, Right? If these expressions are truly equal, then no matter what you plug in for x, you should get the same number. 
right, for each of these. All right, so if I were to plug in 1 for x, both of them would give me a result, a value of 999, you know, as an example. But I leave it to you to do all that checking and testing if you wish. Great. And then I just got, you know, a few more of these where it's either going to be a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. And it should be obvious because, you know, if there's a minus sign in between, it's a difference of cubes. And if there's a plus sign, it's a sum of cubes. All right, so it looks like both of these are differences of cubes. Right. So you got two terms, minus sign, right, a difference, and the powers I'm seeing are multiples of three. So there's a good chance that this is a difference of cubes. Let's see how. Well, 27y cubed, that's the same as 3y to the third power. Right. There, it, it is a cube. 3y times 3y times 3y would be 27y to the third. All right, minus, then 8 is 2 cubed. All right, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. All right, so I think of this as, you know, 3y as the a and 2 as the b. All right, and remember this is a difference of cubes, so this is going to factor to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Right, and I'm just replacing all the a's with 3y and all the b's with 2. So we have 3y minus 2 times, and then the, you know, the in parenthesis, or whenever, you, usually when you replace something, you put parentheses around it, right? This is 3y to the second plus, you know, 3y times 2 plus, and then 2 squared, and we simplify this. So the first factor, 3y minus 2 times, and then this second factor, you know, 3y squared is 9 times y squared, plus 3y times 2 is 6y, plus, and then 2 squared is 4. And there we go, and again, if, if there was no GCF to pull out in the beginning, this quadratic should be prime. Right? And you'll actually see, if you tried factoring this, you know, take 9 times 4, the AC method, the grouping method, take 9 times 4 and you get 36, there are no factors of 36 that add up to 6, so this can't be factored over the integers any further. You, you'd eventually see that, I hope. And then again, of course, don't forget to check, right? Multiply these and you better get 27y cubed minus 8 at the end. Also, you know, if these are truly equal, they should have the same value no matter what you plug in for y. Great. All right, so example 4, another difference of cubes, right? Two terms. There's a minus sign here. Uh, and the powers I'm seeing are multiples of 3, right? So let's see how this is a difference of cubes. You know, how is each term a cube? Well, b to the third is obvious. It's just b to the third. <laughs> it's a cube, clearly. Minus, and then 8d cubed is 2d to the third, right? 2d times 2d times 2d would be 8d cubed. So I have a difference of cubes. And again, I'm going to write the formula again. I want you. I want to get it through to, through to you a bunch, right? The more you write it, the better you know it, hopefully. So this lowercase b, I'm going to call that capital A, and this 2d, right? The second expression being cubed, I'm going to call that capital B. And once again, I'll write the formula out. Uh, a difference of cubes factors this way, right? A minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And just go through and replace all the a's with lowercase b, and replace all the capital B's with 2d. Right, so this will factor to you know, b minus 2d times you know, b squared plus b times 2d plus 2d squared and then simplifying that second 
we get that second factor, we get the following. All right, so the first factor is b minus 2d, and the second factor is, you know, b squared plus 2bd plus 4d squared, right, 2d to the second power, 4d squared. And there we go. That's our original expression factored, written as a product. And of course, I'll write this every time. Don't forget to check your work. All right, multiply these together and combine like terms. You should end up with b cubed minus 8d cubed. And if you don't, then either you're multiplying wrong or you did something wrong. And another thing you should notice is that you know if this expression truly is equal to this one, they should have the same value no matter what you plug in for b and d. And I leave it to you to check all that. All right, and I've got just one more, one more example. And um, this one is a sum of cubes. See, I got two terms. There's a plus sign, so it's a sum, and the powers I'm seeing are multiples of three. So there's a good chance that this is a sum of cubes. Right. Well, let's see how. Uh, 729 is actually 9 to the third power, 9 times 9 times 9. So this first term, 729 q cubed, is 9 q to the third power. Right? 9 q times 9 q times 9 q would give me this first term. Plus, all right, and then 1331 is just another cube that I know, right? I'd recommend knowing a few, uh, maybe up to like, 15 cubed. Um, you don't have to. Right? But just, that's 11 cubed. 11 times 11 times 11. Right, so that's 11 cubed. Alright, so I'm thinking of this 9 q here as the capital A. Think of the 11 as capital B. And this time we have a sum of cubes. right? So this factor is this way. A plus B times a squared minus a b and then plus always plus there b squared right. and then just go through and I'm replacing all the a's with 9q and all the b's with 11 so that first factor is 9q plus 11 times and then we have you know a squared so 9q squared minus a b, right, so minus 9 q times 11 plus and then b squared, right, 11 squared. And we'll simplify this second factor. So I have 9 q plus 11 times 9 q squared is, you know, 81 q squared minus 9 q times 11 is 99 q and then plus 11 squared plus 121. And there we go. That's our original expression factored, right, written as a product of two factors there. And as I've been saying all the time, right, don't forget to please check your work. Multiply these. Distribute the 9q. Distribute the 11. Combine like terms. And you would end up with this original expression, or at least you should. Also, these two expressions should take on the same value no matter what you plug in for Q. Right, but I leave all that stuff to you. Great. All right, so I'm hoping that watching me go through these five examples here helps you in some way when you're asked to factor a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes on your own. And thank you very much for watching.